The central imagery of baptism arises from the dramatic events of the book of Exodus. The service comes in three parts. In the first part, we imagine the Hebrews gathered on the west bank of the Red Sea. They glance back and hear the chariots of Pharaoh chasing them. The question here is, do you sincerely want to leave slavery behind? Hence we ask those to be baptised if they really want to step out of their old life and begin a new life in Christ. Then we imagine them in the deep bed of the Red Sea, crossing over with huge waves reared up on either side of them. Here the question is, do you believe God can take away the old life and give you a new life that lasts forever? If they say yes, we douse them in the waters, which represent cleansing, but also drowning of all that oppresses them. Finally, we imagine them freshly clothed and dry on the east bank of the sea. Here the question is, are you willing to take up the calling to discipleship, ministry and mission? If they say yes, we anoint them for their new role and we give them a candle so they always shine with the light of Christ. Wilby's Vox Christi is a setting of the last words of Matthew's Gospel in which Jesus commands disciples to go and baptise those of all nations in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Just as the Church has long differed about the Eucharist in regard to whether the elements of bread and wine do or don't become the body and blood of Christ, so the Church has also differed over baptism. The early Church mostly baptised adults who made a decision to endanger their lives by following Christ. 
Adult baptism is all about choice and commitment. It wants children to grow up and find a faith of their own. But quite early, the church also baptised infants. The truth is that this embodies the way God chooses us, rather than vice versa. It's not so much about us being the centre of things, but a story that's always about God. In God's eyes, we're always infant children. More profoundly, if baptism means letting the old life die and living for God alone, why wouldn't we want to do this from the very outset of our lives? Giovanni Per Luigi de Palestrina's setting of Psalm 42 portrays vividly what it means for God to desire us like a deer longing for water. In the Anglican tradition, where infant baptism is still the norm, there's an opportunity for adults to be received into full communion through the rite of confirmation. This isn't so much confirming our faith in God as God confirming the gifts endowed in baptism. It's associated with the words of Isaiah that refer to the spirit of wisdom and understanding, counsel and inward strength, knowledge and true fear of the Lord. The emphasis on the Holy Spirit picks up on the third element of the baptism service, the clothing and equipping for ministry. This Stuart Townend song is a prayer for the Holy Spirit to clothe God's people for ministry. <laughs> 